One thing I want to show you from Connor Bedard's shot is what we teach in the slingshot shooting system, which is to actually have your wrist supinated. So if you notice here, as he is preparing for the shot, and by the way, I always love when we get to see players without their full gear on, because you can actually start to see how the body moves. And one thing that we see here is that Bedard is using the NHL grip code, which is where the palm of the wrist is actually facing up a bit. A lot of players, when I coach them on this, they say, how, how am I supposed to generate any power? Because I was taught to lean into my stick and, you know, tickle the nipple and, you know, do the little the push-pull thing. But what we see is that what Bedard is doing is slightly different. He's generating something called the wrist springs. So when he has this wrist supinated prior to the shot, what he's doing is generating something we call dynamic tension, where he's connecting the kinetic chain all the way from his wrist along the back of his forearms, back of his upper arms to his back, and then we can see it going all the way down here. So what that's doing is creating a stretch across all of the muscles and fascia of his back. And that is, is loading up the, not just the stick, but it's also creating the whip, the slingshot effect from his entire kinetic chain that is gonna generate so much power in such a compact way. It's quite incredible when you see it. So that's the first thing. And when you see the shot occur, you can see how the hand does come out and away from the body. And something we talk about is hands uh, in front of the puck. So we always have like net, hands, and then puck here. And notice how he increases that stretch. And again, he's not really uh, pushing that hand out. It's more like he's creating this, uh, that uh, kinetic chain, that dynamic tension across uh, his back. The second thing, or I guess third thing, is that you'll notice that while there is some downward pressure on the stick, and the, the analogy I like to use that I've heard one time is that you want to imagine that you have this window that is, uh, let's call it nine feet, and then the stick is 9.5 feet. And then what that means is you're kind of pushing the stick through the window, and that's generating your uh, flex of your stick. And that's what you can see him doing here, is there's a bit of downward pressure, but you don't see him leaning his body down on the stick as so many coaches teach to get stick flex. What you see is that this hand actually ends up coming forward. So it goes from here, and then it's gonna come forward like that. And this is where we get the dual wrist springs. So we have the um, wrist bent this way, and then the wrist bent this way. So we're creating a stretch off the front of this wrist, and then this is creating a stretch off the back. And then at the very last moment, all of this connects, or I guess uh, unleashes, to create that whip. So from here, notice how as soon as that puck gets to that release point where hands are in, in front of the puck relative to the net, all of a sudden it just goes where this wrist spring, I'll go back a touch, where this wrist spring that was here and this wrist spring that was here unlocks. So boom, and really quickly, you can see the puck go from here to office deck. And you can see this, the stick go from here to a really quickly pointed spot. And if we back it up and look at what that looks like from the side, the power is incredible when you see uh, that these mechanics in play. And it's amazing because he's not a big player and the power is just amazing. It's amazing how compact, how compactly he can generate this power. And that comes from these different mechanics. Also look, paying attention to something that I often talk about is that we see uh, the back rounded, which is not a common strength and conditioning cue. Even as a coach have re previously recommended that players get their shoulder blades down and back and they make sure that they have a neutral spine because at the time I was very focused on that. 
what we see now is, or what, what I think the best players have always done, I think Gretzky is a great example. The best players actually have this rounded so that they can create that uh, dynamic tension across the back. So I hope those things help. And then if you are wanting to go more in depth to learn these things step by step, we have the slingshot shooting system as part of Train 2.0, where we teach these mechanics so that you can learn them and shoot with this type of power. Thanks for watching.